Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled The Gap in Inductive Score, a different and I think interesting perspective. This presentation was inspired by a LinkedIn post written by Colin Tuck. Here is a link to the presentation and I'm going to put the link at the uh, YouTube page of this video. Now, why do we need a gap in a core that is used as an inductor? Here are the windings. Here, this is the length of the path length of the uh, ferrite material. And here is the length of the gap. And uh, we usually need a gap in order to store energy. Now, the intuitive way to explain it is the following. Now, the relative permeability of the ferrite material is very high. Consequently, the total permeability is high, and therefore there is a steep rise here in the BH curve. Now, if we need to store some energy, that is some current in the winding, therefore building up a magnetic field according to this relationship, then pretty soon with a high permeability, we're going to hit saturation, which is a not a good point, not a good point to work at. Now, by putting a gap, you might say that we are sort of diluting the permeability and consequently for the same current, same H, we are at a lower B. So this is the intuitive explanation. Why do we need a gap? And uh, we can show that uh, total relative permeability is about the ratio between the length, the path length, magnetic path length within the core and LG. Now there is another way to look at it, and this is the objective of this presentation, from the energy point of view, and this is quite of interest here. So, in this case, we are con concerned about the magnetic field within the ferrite and within the gap. Now we know that the circular integ integral of HDL is equal to n times i, and in this case it's actually broken into two parts, assuming that then each part h is about constant. Then we have hf, which is the magnetic field within the core, times the length here, plus the magnetic field within the gap times the length of the gap. So this is equal to n i. Now, what about the, mag the magnetic field themselves? Now, HF, this is the magnetic field within the ferrite, is B over total mu, while the magnetic field in the gap is B over mu sub zero, because the relative permeability is one, and this is like vacuum. Now, B and B are the same, because we are assuming that all the flux path all the fl magnetic flux is flowing through here, and I'm sort of neglecting possible fringes here, dispersion here, so I'm assuming that the flux, magnetic flux is sort of straight here, so the density of the magnetic flux is the same here. So B and B is the same B, and dividing one to the other, you get that the magnetic field within the gap over the magnetic field in the ferrite is mu r, which is a very large number. It's like 3,000, 4,000. So this is why we're saying that the magnetic field here is very high. It's therefore a source of EMI. And uh, this is the reason that uh, mu r is a large number. So what about magnetic energy? Well, magnetic energy is equal to one half the volume integral of BH that is, uh, taking this integral over the total volume that we have. And uh, since h is uh, b over mu, uh, I can write it in this way. This is again a volumetric integral, one half b squared over mu, total mu, uh, and over the total volume. Now, if we are talking about in each part, um, assumed to be isotropic, that is the same B and the same mu, then obviously uh, this boils down to a multiplication of this times the volume. And I can call this the energy density or magnetic energy density, that's B squared over 2 mu, and I'll label it as E sub D. This is the energy density. 
and of course the volume that we have is for the magnetic part it's a sub e which is the cross section area of the core this is here this is the cross section area times the length and this is the volume of the ferrite excuse me that's that's it and here is the volume of within the gap and this is a sub b again times the length of the gap this is the volume in closed here within the gap this energy density times this volume is the energy here and here uh, the product here times ed is the energy within the ferrite and here it is energy within the gap is the energy density times the volume of the gap energy within the ferrite is ed over v ferrite and now I'm taking the ratio between them and it turns out from the expression we had before that it is equal to LG over LF this is the length of the gap over the length of the ferrite times mu R now this number is larger than 1 much larger than 1 why is that because mu R is a large number LG over LF well uh, it could be like this should be 1 over this is like 1 over 100 that is we have 3000 here maybe 100 divided by 100 this is 1 over okay this is mistake here and therefore it's 30 40 50 depending on of course the, on the gap in any case we can see that most of the magnetic energy is in the gap okay it's certainly more than 10 times than in the ferrite and probably much more than that depending on the length of the gap okay now on the other hand energy is the light square over 2 so we know what is the energy that is supposed to be stored in the core or in the magnetic element and it turns out that it's in the core and not only in the core it's in the gap and this will be this energy equal to the energy within the gap this is the energy within the gap now expresses uh, the function of the magnetic flux density and the volume of the gap now this means that the volume of the gap needed for a given energy for a given design is constant because there are some consideration for choosing V could be saturation could be a power loss and therefore these numbers here are fixed for a given design of a core if they are independent of the form of the core or the shape of the core or the type of the core and what this equation expression says that the volume of the gap that you need is constant it's independent on the type of the core now this implies that if you take a core with a larger area cross-section area you need a smaller gap because the product of this is again uh, this is the volume constant okay so this is a very interesting observation here that the volume within the gap is independent of the shape of the core or the type of the core it is a function of the energy you want to store and the B and B again is um, determined by some considerations so if we go through the design based on the AP approach which is AP is the product of the cross-section area times the wind winding area here it is and the objective here is to fill here uh, the winding area and this is the expression for the AP we know all these from the design constraint this is the inductance IRMS I pick J is the current density within the wires K is the packing factor and B max is the B that we would like to have and again it could be um, due to the saturation uh, if it's a low frequency it's high frequency usually it'll be a loss consideration so once we have this we can choose the core 
once we choose the core we will have now the length of the gap because the product of the volume is constant this is the volume and divide the volume by the cross-section area of the core will give you now the length of the gap that you need. This would imply that flat magnetics which are characterized by a large cross-section area will have a shorter gap which is nice because the emission of EMI will be smaller so this is one advantage of a flat magnetics core. So this is the end of this short presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.